So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a very cool pen that I've been using a lot lately, and that is this Tombow Zoom 101. This is a carbon fiber and aluminum fountain pen that was sold in about 2015 for a few years. And I wouldn't say it's rare now, but it's not a pen you see very often. It was sold as a ballpoint, a rollerball and a fountain pen. Clearly I have it here in the fountain pen version. And uh, like I said, it is a very cool and underappreciated pen. It was released in 2015 to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Tombow Design Collection, which is Tombow's set of sort of high design pens, of which this is one. And it was billed at the time as being the lightest high-end fountain pen ever made. I don't know how true that actually is, but the pen's about 14 or 14 and a half grams. And... Uh, that's not, it's light, but it's not like insanely light. There are lighter and smaller pens out there. So that's, it's not exactly true, but it is an interesting fact. One of the reasons the pen is so light is that it, this, it uses this carbon fiber. This is real carbon fiber. It's not faux carbon fiber, like found on the Pilot Vanishing Point. It's actually carbon fiber. And the rest of the material is a type of aluminum that Tumbo calls uh, door alumin. Door aluminum, it's like aluminum, but with D U R at the front and missing two letters from the back. And it seems to be just like a type of aluminum, like Easton aluminum or something like that, just an alloy of aluminum. It doesn't look any different than normal aluminum, but uh, I guess it has some different qualities. The more important part is that this pen is not only a carbon fiber pen, but it has some qualities of a machined pen as well. You can see it has really nice aluminum work has this really cool looking aluminum cap with the aluminum spring loaded clip which is really really well done if you like well made or well crafted metal things and you like carbon fiber and you like fountain pens this niche is just uh this pen is like i guess right up your alley the other piece of the pen are, it's like some of the pen's components are somewhat basic. Like you can see the nib is a very boring, very plain steel nib. It does say uh, Tombow on there. It's a little bit hard to make out, but there's no other sort of scroll work or anything like that. It's just a rhodium plated steel nib. It was sold in fine, medium, and broad. Uh, this is the medium and it's a pretty wet medium. So uh, I would not, I guess I would be hesitant to go ahead and get that broad. Here's some of the aluminum work. It's really nicely done. And if you open the pen up, you can see it uses a standard or short international refill. It will also accommodate a long, which is quite cool. And uh, again, the craftsmanship of the aluminum is really fantastic. You can see this is all one piece and it has those really nice kind of uh, CNC'd or machined threads, just really well done. Quite cool. I guess that's a minor detail, but uh, I do like the metal work a lot. And here's that standard short international refill. You could, again, put one long or two shorts in there. There is a, um, having some minor focusing issues, apologies. You can see there's a metal collar at the end here to protect the carbon fiber, which is very cool. So you have aluminum on aluminum instead of aluminum possibly uh, grading into the carbon fiber. The carbon looks fantastic. It's again, real carbon fiber, not faux. It's not a sticker. This is actually the real deal. Then you see more of that aluminum work and then an O-ring at the end. So it is sort of kind of race inspired like the McLarens uh, because they use the aluminum and the O-ring. Uh, O-rings always eventually will wear out, but this one looks to be a pretty standard O-ring. I think it's like a number five or something like that, and it should be replaceable. Again, you can see some nice stepping work here. It's not necessary, but it looks cool, and some nice stepping work here. If you tend to hold the pen very, very low, you will be holding it on this stepping, which is slippery, but it's not uncomfortable. It's just slippery. I tend to hold it, this pen in particular, a little bit further back. The pen will post, which is uh, pretty nice. 
post it, it's, it's rather long, but it's so light that it's not actually a terrible pen to post. I'm not generally someone that does that, but again, if you were going to do it, a pen that this light is re this light is really ideal for me to post. And the posting is fine. It's not like it holds really tight or really loose. Just a single O-ring is not ideal, but it gets the job done. As you could probably tell, the pen does snap on and snaps off. Uh, when it does pull off, it tends to pull a little bit of ink out, but I've never had it drop or create any leaks. It's just that it gets the nib a little dirty looking. I would have preferred to see this with a screw on cap, but this one has a nice firm action, so I can't really complain. That covers most of the details about the Zoom 101. It's a, a pretty simple pen, and it's just that it's uh, simplicity means it doesn't hide anything. It's just a wonderfully constructed pen, and it's really unlike most of what you see out there. It's a normal size. That's a little bit on the thin side. I think it's about maybe 10 and a half millimeters wide, so it's definitely a little skinny, and there's no like convention, or there's no so, sort of like additions or anything like that for the grip. You're just holding on to either kind of shiny, this like, I guess, matte, carbon fiber or the aluminum, neither of which are, both of which are fine, but neither of which are in any way make any allowances for your hand. And uh, that's really it for the details. So I just want to do some writing and then we'll wrap this up. So like I said before, this is the Tombow Zoom 101. Tombow calls almost most of their pens are somehow in that zoom line. Like I said before, this nib is steel. It's rhodium coated, so it's nice and shiny. I thought it was just polished steel until I did a little bit of research and they said it was rhodium coated. And uh, this is a extremely reliable writer for me. I've been using this pen for a lot of note taking over the coming weeks, over the past couple weeks. And it's just been just very consistent, nice writer. It's a little bit wet for medium, uh, but no problems with that. And it just writes and writes and writes. I have it with a uh, Schneider Black fountain pen ink, which is again, just super reliable. And it just makes for a very no nonsense setup. You could write until this cartridge runs dry and you'll never have any sort of issues. Uh, no hard starts, nothing like that. The nib is, uh, like I said, kind of boring looking. It is a little strange because there's no breather hole or anything like that. Just a slit to where it says Tombow and that's it. Being lefty, Tombow is always upside down. It's really nicer if you could have something uh, vertically oriented and just have a T maybe or a TO or a TB, something like that. That way it's not upside down for lefties, but super minor point there. So nice writer, very smooth and uh, very consistent. You know, it's not like uh, gold nib smooth, but it's uh, super consistent and smooth enough. You know, despite the nib being boring and having basically no line variation, kind of like a uh, old school uh, uh, rotary nib, if you've used one of those, it, uh, it gets the job done. I can't really complain. And like I said, it's very reliable. It's always just like take the cap off and this thing is ready to go. So from that standpoint, I really do like this pen. I've been using it a whole lot. These pens are a little bit hard to find these days and prices tend to go in the like $100 range, maybe a little bit more. Uh, for that, it's not exactly a steel, but if you're kind of a geek about metalwork and carbon fiber, then it's probably an interesting pickup. You definitely will not see a lot of these around. So that is the Tombow Zoom 101. Thanks for watching.